Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath Message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have Sister Joanna here with me. And between the two of us, we will be delivering this message today. We God has given us that privilege. And uh, we want to thank, we want to uh, wish everyone a blessed Sabbath, that is. And, and Sister Joanna will be uh, singing a song, Blessing Our Hearts with Her Voice. And But before we go to that song, let's go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And we also thank you for the privilege of this presentation, a uh, portion of your word to those who are listening, as well, well as the beautiful song Sister Joanna is about to sing. Lord, we, we thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives. And we pray that you just be with us, Lord, and 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 you be the God, you put the words in my mouth, and you be the study, Lord, and just anoint it, anoint Joanna's song, anoint this message, and just give to everyone that you have for them today. And we thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. And now, Sister Joanna. Amen. Um, you know, before Jesus died on the cross, he made a promise to his disciples that he would send comforter, that he would send the spirit, his Holy Spirit. And this message is about that, that um, Pastor Rufus has been given by God. And this song is about that. And it's a song we all know. But if you really listen and feel the words of the song, it's about a hunger, a hunger for the Holy Spirit. And so I, I would like all of us to really meditate upon that hunger that is in us, that we long for the Spirit of God to overwhelm us, overcome us. And... Um, the Lord will help me here. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Give us your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. We want your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone because of your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Please flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our heart 
was longed for to be overcome by your presence, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, your presence, Lord. We long for your presence, Lord. We hunger for you, dear Lord. Fill us with your spirit now. Help us not to be content with the way we are, Lord Jesus. Help us to reach out to you and open our hearts to receive your spirit. We want your presence, Lord. We want your presence in us and through us and beside us and all over us so that everything we say, everything we do will tell people who you are and the greatness and the glory of your love and your healing power. Give us your presence, Lord. Lord, there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare for our living hope. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere for glory God is what we hunger for to be overcome by your presence Lord give us your spirit Amen. Amen. And he comes in a Russian wind. Now, for our good news message today, the spirit in a Russian wind. Okay, a little technical issue here. I believe it's resolved now. So we'll go to the introduction for our message today. And it reads, today's Sabbath message focuses upon Pentecost, a glorious day when God filled the assembly with a violent manifestation of the spirit. The apostle Peter took advantage and preached the gospel, drawing 3,000 souls to the Lord. The Spirit also opened the ears of those whom God had previously scrambled at the Tower of Babel. And for our first uh, uh, passage today, uh, it is entitled To Friends of God. And uh, that will be found in Acts, first verse of Acts, Acts 1. And it reads A former account. I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, till the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. 
Okay. Instructions after resurrection. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Promise of the Father. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, that was basically the introduction to the book of Acts. Now, notice it started out with the words, the formal account of, of with words that spoke of the former account of the events and teachings of Jesus, okay, mentioned above, uh, were written in the Gospel of Luke, okay, and and this this person who is speaking is the person who with whom uh, Luke addresses Luke himself, who is the writer, will address this book to. But let me finish reading this, and then and we'll get to that. Luke, the writer of Acts, who at times traveled with Paul, was also the writer of other books assigned to the apostle. There's some mystery as to who Theoph Theophilus was. We might gather that he was some high official with whom Luke shared his writings. And the reason the title of this writing, to Friends of God, the word Theophilus means friend of God. And so Luke has addressed his book both the, the, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts to a person named who, or who is referred to as Theophilus. Now, again, all we know about him uh, is that he seemed to be some official who Luke was sharing his writings, and he was a friend of God, according to Luke someone who followed Christ and who was interested in Christ, and uh, therefore this uh, book was addressed to him. So let's move on to our next set of verses. Jesus taken up as disciples watch. And we get, we're beginning in verse 9 of Acts for this. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Disciples enter the room. Then they return to Jerusalem on the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Now, for those of you who don't know this, a Sabbath day's journey was, was about a mile and a half. And the reason it was called a Sabbath day, day's journey is because there was a rule written among in the uh, it's a Jewish document that explained what a Sabbath, Sabbath, how how much how far someone could journey from his home on the Sabbath, or it would be considered work, a violation of the Sabbath, and that was explained in the tablet. 
That was the name of the document, which explains the law and what the law meant in detail. And so Sabbath day's walk was approximately a mile and a half that the, the uh, <clears throat> Jewish people were allowed to, to go away from their home before it was considered a violation of the Sabbath. Now, and let me tell you a little more about this. It's sort of a, 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 fu a funny story. There were many who violated this journey, Sabbath day's journey, and here's how they did it. They would leave their home having to go somewhere beyond a mile and a half, and they would take a tent with them. And, and they would go about a mile and a half and they'd set up the tent and, and, and for a while and call this their home. They've moved. And, and so they just spent a few minutes there and then they'll take the tent up and go and go to another mile and a half. And so, as, as you can see there, even in those days, the people who violated the law as they knew it. And although this, this rule, I think, and they saw it as being a little bit ridiculous by the, 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 uh, the rulers who wrote this, you know, who wrote this law, who explained this law in this way and tried to hold them accountable to that. So that was the manner that they violated. So let's, let's continue our reading in verse 13. And when they had entered, they went up to up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. Now these were the remaining 11 disciples who went up to the upper room. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And so we, we know in addition to the disciples, these were all the close associates with Jesus. And those who, who of course, were mourn his death, I'm sure, especially his family members, and, but knowing that there was hope behind his death. So now we find them all in the upper room uh, praying and, and being together. But, but for now, let's, we, let's skip back. We're going we're gonna, to um, take a break from this following this story in Acts and go back to the Tower of Babel because it will be important for us going forward. So let's go back to the Tower of Babel. And that begins in Genesis 11, verse 1. And it reads, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. They dwelt there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come. Let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves as we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Okay, now, and you can imagine what the Lord thought about that. And in verse five, it says, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. This is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language. that They may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad. From there, over the face of all the earth, they cease building the city. Okay, now in, in this passage, we see that these men had determined they wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to be as of God is. It, they wanted to be like God or, or just be someone who ruled themselves. And they all got together and agreed to do this. 
so when we can see how that was an affront to God and how and why God was displeased with that. Let's, let's move on to the rest of the comments I have here. Since the whole earth had the same language, great power was given to those who agreed upon a task. The people of Babel decided to make a name for themselves by building a tower that reached up to heaven. The Lord scrambled their language and thwarted their plan. On Pentecost, God caused those from many nations to hear the gospel and gain salvation. Now, brothers and sisters, I hope you can see the connection in this. God had scattered many people over the face of the earth uh, prior to bringing his people, those his chosen people, to where they are now. But I believe that God didn't want to shut out these people who he had scattered. He made a way, or he found a way to bring them back to him. And I believe we'll see this as we go on. Day of Pentecost. Okay, in Acts uh, 2, again in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Hung to fire upon the disciples. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. One sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not all these who speak Galileans? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene. This is us from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking, saying, they're full of new wine. Okay, now let's uh, have some further comments regarding this event here. Excuse me. Um, after spending three years with Jesus and watching him Taken up to heaven, this was a glorious time for the disciples. They spent time together in prayer. It would come to be their, their time of fruitfulness. Then came a rushing wind and tongues of fire upon them. The message went out to all who were present. Every heart was prompted to hear the message that would follow. Amen. Now we'll we'll go to Peter's sermon. Acts 2, verses 14 through 24. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, all these men from different parts of the world, let this be known to you and heed my words. These are not drunk. As you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so, and we'll look at Joel's prophecy. And, and, uh, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, 
that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And the signs and the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood for the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. And so now we'll go to the gospel message. Of course, this is, will be Peter. And Peter goes on to say, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, having crucified and put to death whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by its power. Amen. Amen. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucify, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were cut to the heart. They were convicted. What shall we do? What shall we do? The question that any reasonable person who just who was just convicted in his or her heart by the good news message would ask. There's also the true test of whether one has presented the gospel message with the power found in the story with which Jesus had armed his followers. That is to say, the true meaning of his death and resurrection. And some further comments on this, and we know that Peter, along with all the other disciples, and even some of the others who weren't disciples, families of Jesus, his mother, his, his brothers, and other people who were close to him, they knew him and they knew his story. They knew, they watched him being crucified and they had been appeared to. They knew that he was raised and they all knew that this was a wonderful work of God. And so therefore this, gospel, this message to the, the other, the, those who were present there in this assembly, really had really picked their hearts. And, and their question was, what shall we do? And they'll get that answer. Repent. And that was the answer that Peter would give them. And we'll go to uh, Acts 2, 36 to, through 39. And Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promises to you, and to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Now, there in that statement, that, that includes us brothers and sisters, and that promise has reached us. That word has reached for us to repent, that's why we're here today listening to this message and, and looking at all the things that had happened, all the things that God did to bring us here with the disciples and, and uh, even uh, reuniting those who he had scattered in all parts of the world who had led different lives. Uh, he caused them to somehow make their way back and be, become 
uh, known to the Jewish, that at that time, Jewish community and, 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 and their practices of God and knowing God through them, they happened to be in this assembly and, and God uh, created this amazing miracle of causing them to understand language of those who's, who had no idea about their language. But uh, the Lord had put his spirit upon them, excuse me, and created this great miracle. Amen. Amen. So that brings us to the conclusion. And it says, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. That day about 3,000 souls were added to them. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. And sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Now, what an amazing thing that these gathering there, people from all different parts of the world, they came together in unity. And they had all, not only physically together, but everything that they had, they considered it community possession. And they just, Whoever had something, it was it belongs to everyone else, and uh, it was divided among everyone. Amen. What a, what a blessed story this is, and what a blessed message it is for us. So let's move on to verse forty six. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. What a fruitful time this was. The Lord poured out his spirit. Everyone recognized it. Everyone knew where it came from. Everyone praised the Lord. And they became as one, as one. All these people who never made eyes upon each other before this day. Many of them had not. And, uh, and even those who had laid eyes upon each other, they were changed. They were causing everything that they had to be as a community possession. They were all as one. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this message today. And we just thank you, Lord, for this lovely Sabbath day that you've given us. And what better way to experience the Sabbath or to be with you and uh, rest in you and listening to this word that you've given us today, Lord, a word that teaches us clearly things, the wonderful, glorious miracles that you did to begin your church, to bring 3,000 plus souls to you on this day. And as this work continues in our hearts and in many of those and all those who are listening to us, Lord, we pray that you will continue to fill us with your spirit, Lord, and just, just created a, a fire in our bones and in our hearts that we may share your word, share your great, wonderful work, share your love, Lord, with others. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this. And we just thank you for having us, Lord. Just continue to be with us and continue to keep us rooted and grounded in your word and in your love. And, and we just give you all the honor all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen.